Hi, good morning folks. Welcome to an unexpected episode of A Franchise Reborn. This is a video on the channel, if you're new here, that talks about news within the organization, current news. And big news today, guys, they finally pulled the trigger and fired Don Granado. I did not expect this. I was doing something, my buddy texted me, I'm like, I gotta make a video, and I just ran in here, I'm gonna jump on this now and get back to what I'm doing, but Folks, this is huge. They didn't wait. I thought we'd suffer all summer with thinking Granado's coming back and all. I really did. I really did. I thought they were going to probably hang on to him or... See, for those of you that have the theory that, that Pagula's too cheap, well, think about it. His ext uh, Granado's extension kicks in next year. Granado, uh, Pagula's never been cheap, folks, okay? I know that you like to think he was, then you just didn't follow the Sabres since he took over the team. You forget we had the highest paid team in the league for years in the beginning of Pagula's tenure here as owner. So I wasn't worried about the money part of this. I was worried about that he's going to let Adams do what Adams wants. Now I'm hoping, I'm hoping this was an Adams decision and not a Pagula decision, but the truth is I don't really care. It's done. Oh, we can breathe. A, 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 we can breathe again. I, I feel like we can breathe as Sabres fans today, guys. Damn it. Like, this is really huge. This is really, really huge. We, now we have an opportunity to get ourselves set up for next year. And if we go and put Seth Appert as coach, I'm literally going to hang myself with this team. Honestly, if they do that, we deserve the fate we get next year, which will be missing the playoffs again. That's what will happen. Because I'll tell you what, for those of you that think Appert's the right call, do you not remember the interview Appert gave when he came up here? He said, I know the system that we do. This is what he said. Meaning a non-contact team, guys. No, we need to get a coach in here that's going to make us rough and tough, okay? A guy that's, that's about business, not about friendship. Enough is enough already. I'm really, you know. So this is a quote by Kevin Adams, okay? I will show you guys the header. Here we go. There you see it, Granato fired a Sabres coach, no replacement named. And it says, yeah, I know, blah, 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 we missed 13 straight seasons and whatever. Okay, so what, um, what uh, Kevin Adams says, he goes, I'd like to thank Don for his time in Buffalo and commitment to the Sabres organization. He's been an integral, he has been integral in the development of many of our players, very true. Very true, and has undoubtedly been the right coach to bring us to where we are now. I agree with that, okay? I agreed with that four months ago, though. Three months ago. Not now, but it is what it is. But I felt it necessary to move in a different direction, all right? So I'm reading into the different direction thing, and if different direction means Seth Appert, we're the dumbest organization in pro sports, in my opinion. At this point in time, my expectation is to be a consistent contender, and unfortunately, that goal has not been met. So he expected, Adam has expected more this year, obviously. I liked, and and um, also Jason Christie, Matt Smith were also fired. Uh, I don't see Ellis's name there. But anyway, I'm sure like when a new coach comes in, all the, all the coaching staff's gone. Um, I would also like to thank Jason and Matt for their contributions to the team. This is not a decision I take lightly, but no, it is in the best interest of our team moving forward. My goodness, guys, my goodness. They finally did something a healthy organization does. They didn't hesitate and they fired the coach. This is what a healthy organization does. And today we're a healthy organization, at least today, okay? I know the season was, the season was shit. It was a lousy year. It was a terrible year. But at least there was repercussions. Not Don giving his speech after the game. It got, and you guys know it was feeling like Kruger again, right? He's a better coach than Kruger. But it, it, was, it was that frustrating to listen to him in, in, in interviews and stuff. I couldn't take it anymore. You guys know. How many times I tell you I don't listen to him no more in interviews? I can't. Because what's the point of me getting angry, win or lose? I'd rather just not be angry and watch uh, American Pickers on TV and enjoy my entertainment that way. I don't want to be frustrated and listen to this guy give the same song and dance game after game. I can't, I can't do it. So, uh, Granado's a good hockey man. I think he's more of a, a guy that can be a development coach. 
we've all discussed this, and I think that is his expertise, really. He doesn't, guys, I said it years ago, he's going to go down if he doesn't get this team hitting. Boom, there it is today. No, you cannot have a team that's non-contact in a contact sport and expect to succeed, okay? And the only reason we really went up in hits this year was a guy named Clifton. Really, Clifton. Clifton made the other guys feel a little obligated to play a little physical. I'm telling you, if we didn't have Clifton on the team, we would have been dead last in hits this year. Dead last, again. This guy never taught the team to play physical, hard-nosed hockey. He just taught how to pass and come out of the zone. That's all he taught. And even that we suck right now at because teams have watched watch the videos and they know how to clamp us up in the neutral zone now because he had, no, he had no combat for it this year, guys. He didn't. There's a lot of things this coach did wrong this year. A lot of things. A lot of times he should have called a timeout. He didn't. There's a lot I can whine about. The worst part for me was how the team wasn't prepared night, night in, night out. They weren't prepared to play hockey this year, guys. They were prepared to skate and play a bit of pond hockey. That's what they were doing all year. They were just going out there, and there was nights they were so embarrassed from the game before, they'd show up with their A game. You need a coach that's gonna demand an A game, 82 games a year, and gets about 62 A games out of the squad, not 30, okay? And this team is much more capable than 500, sorry, two games over. We're a much more capable team than that, guys. Much more. This team this year, really the talent on this team, we should have been competing for first place this year. But take a look at the teams in first place. I'll read it down. I'll read you something down. Okay, guys, I might even clip it out, but no point. I'll just, uh, I want to read something here. Uh. All right, now, top teams in the league in hitting. Number one, the Florida Panthers. Number two, the Boston Bruins. And number three, the Toronto Maple Leafs. What division are we in? And who finished in front of us in our division, guys? Think about that just for a sec. And just for the record, ninth in the league in hitting, Tampa Bay. Ottawa is in front of us in hitting. The only team I believe below us is, uh, no, Montreal. <laughs> Paul's in front of us. Oh my God, how humiliating is this? Ugh. I can go on and on about this, but we needed to make a change, guys. We made it today. We made it today like a healthy team does. I thought they were going to drag it out. We're so used to them screwing up, right? I, this took me by surprise. I'm guessing for those of you that don't know about this yet, and this video just came out, you're surprised. I was surprised. Oh, Detroit, yeah, Detroit's uh, beneath us in hitting. Yeah, Detroit's uh, the one team, right. Well, not by much, but a hit and a half a game, hitting a quarter a game. So, yeah, this team this year, if they could have got just a little more physical, guys, I'm talking a few hits more in certain situations. Just a few times, finish your hits, finish your checks. Let teams know you exist, that you're not just going to go like this and try to poke check. The guy passes the puck, boom, you finish your play. You don't, like, let, the guy, you don't let the guy breathe. You make him go to the bench wheezing. It drove me nuts, guys. It drove me nuts. It's like Granado's too much of a nice guy when it comes to physical play of a team. Now, that's, for me, the worst thing. It's the worst thing. The second worst thing, his fake speeches when they win. They're fake. Those dressing room speeches and those pep talks and... It sounds like bogus garbage to me, guys. I was fed up hearing those, too. I couldn't even... It was dumb. Another mistake the franchise made was putting uh, Ocposo as, as captain. I'm sure that, uh, uh, that Granado was behind that decision as well. It was a bad call at the time. Bad call. They should have just went uh, with no captain then, in my opinion. That's where I was with it. It didn't, it didn't change anything. It didn't change anything. We still missed the playoffs year after year, so it didn't change anything. No matter what you guys think, the ones that uh, have man crushes on Akposo. No, it didn't change anything. You need a guy that's going to come in and, and, and you're held accountable by that captain. He's like, a, he's, like a, he's like an assistant coach that plays. Like you cannot get away with slacking. You cannot get away with bad efforts. I never seen Akposo lose his mind. I never seen him yelling at the players on the bench. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. And that's part of being a captain, guys, okay? 
is your friendship stops at the door when it comes to hockey time. And now I'm the captain of this team and I expect you guys to play like I do. And that's it. So this is really great news, guys. Now, they were talking about, I'll throw some names at you, okay? Doesn't sound like Quenville's one of the potentials. I wish it was. Because Quenville next year, we're guaranteed in the playoffs. Guaranteed. Automatic. It's the best coach in hockey. Automatic guarantee. This guy can develop young players and win Stanley Cups at the same time. How many players said he's the best coach ever, you know, that they ever played for? It's, it, it just it goes without saying. So, let's see what they said about the names. Here's some names for you guys. Jay Woodcroft, Edmonton. No, 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 no. Please, no. If we get Jay Woodcroft, we are, again, the dumbest organization in pro sports. No. No Jay Woodcroft. I don't care about his record at Edmonton. As soon as they got rid of him, they start winning. Dean Evison, Minnesota. Dean Evison, what I like, he's mean. I like that about him. Craig Brewerbe. A lot of us have talked about him. No DJ Smith. Oh, my God. Imagine if we went and did that. How stupid we would look going and getting Ottawa's coach. How many times in this channel did I say, I hope Ottawa signs that guy for life? No. You know what I heard? I heard even Sheldon Keefe if he got fired. No thanks. <laughs> no. Uh, Lane Lambert, Islanders. No thanks. Todd McClellan, Kings. Eh. On the, on the fence with that one. Mm. So far, I, I, I would put Barube as the top one in Everson second. But here's the kicker, Lindy Ruff from New Jersey. Uh, I'd be very good with Lindy. I got no problem with Lindy Ruff. He's an excellent coach. You know, he is. He's an excellent coach. He doesn't take crap. He blasts the refs. He knows how to, he knows all the politics of the league. And um, he, would, he would take this young squad and shape them up fast. I'll tell you that. And I, I, he, he'd probably be in tears if he came back to Buffalo. That's how much he loves the Sabres, this guy. They're ingrained in his soul. So I would be okay with Lindy. I would be, uh, just for the record, I'd be totally okay with Lindy coming back home. And um, if, if Lindy does come back, and let's say he doesn't come back as coach, what I would do, I would hire him as uh, president of hockey operations. I'd put Lindy Ruff, keep Adams there where he belongs. Because don't forget, it's kind of awkward that Lindy's the coach and Adams is the, was one, once upon as a time, his assistant coach. You know, it's kind of weird, but... Hey, they're both professionals, you know. Uh, Quenville's name is not mentioned there. Neither is Babcock. Just in case you guys are wondering, that name wasn't mentioned there. There's, there's names out there that anything's better, guys. Anything. I'll take anything at this point as long as it makes sense. Bruce Boudreau, meh. I've never been a fan of that guy. Ever since he called out his team on... Remember when they had that uh, the Winter Classic and he called out his team on purpose on the reality show? No thanks. No. Not into that. No, I'd rather have Lindy. He's more of a pro. Uh, he knows the city. He knows the fan base. He knows every inch of Buffalo, this guy, right? He's, he, he is the type of coach that would get 100% out of this young team. I have no doubt in my mind Lindy would turn this team around quick, you know? And I think Jersey made a bad mistake firing him. I really do. I think they should have fired their general manager, not Lindy, but it, it's fine. You know, Lindy, I think, was desperate to show he could win when we fired him and he did good in Dallas, you know, and, and people say, oh, you know, what a tragic thing that is. Well, you know what? We brought it on ourselves. We let Lindy Ruff go coach the Dallas Stars, guys. Think about that. You know, this would be our amends as far as I'm concerned to this man if we brought him back. But bring him back. If we don't bring him back as coach, bring him in another capacity. I'd like to get Quenville as coach and Lindy as president. We're set. We are set from that point on. Because then if Adams gets fired eventually, we know Lindy could take over as general manager because he'll have learned that position pretty quick. Lindy has an eye for talent. We've seen him turn many teams around. He has an eye for talent. So, guys, I'm going to leave it there. It's a good day in Buffalo for this. This is welcome news. Enjoy the day. I'll try to get some videos up to you later. Maybe we'll talk about this. I might at least do a what do you call it. We'll talk about it a bit more because there might be a hiring today, guys. In my opinion, before I go on this video, I think that they have a name that they're planning. It better not be Seth Apper because I will lose my mind. I'll, I'll be doing a rant video if that happens because then to me, it's, it's another lost season. It's another boneheaded move, in my opinion. We're going to have a team that doesn't hit again. No thanks. No. 
And Lindy is not the type really to coach a team to be as physical as some other coaches, okay? And I'd still welcome him back. But the thing with Lindy, he'll get 100% aggression out of this team. They'll block. They'll be desperate to win. Like, this is what we've been lacking for, for all year. This year anyway. This year, the desperation wasn't there. Night in, night out. No desperation. Last night was a rare opportunity to see our team desperate kind of to win that game. I think maybe they may have known inside that dressing room this is Donnie's last game. We got to win this for him. Politics, they probably all knew that Donnie was getting fired today is my, my opinion. I think um, inside, they knew. They probably knew. All right, guys. Done for this one. See you later on tonight.